Hey YouTube, Dragon Duel Scroll here with a few announcements. First of all, product announcements. On the Core TCG website, we have fluff tokens, genuine Japanese fluff tokens for a limited time, and of course, Goyer's tokens, so go ahead and check that out. Uh, anybody interested in them? Also, we have mats posted up on the website. Basically, every solid color in the rainbow, and there's a few other mats on there too that you can check out. I'm also going to be posting up a video soon that I'm working on. Uh, those of you who are interested in painting your own custom mats, a lot of people are requesting, you know, a step-by-step -step tutorial on that. So I'll have that up soon for you guys. And today we are going to talk about what happened at Charlotte. Basically, um, the decks that talked and what you should be expecting at Anaheim and other events. Because um, usually what occurs at uh, YCS's uh, reflect what's going to be happening in the meta for a while until someone revolutionizes it next time. So, um, we all know 6 Sam's tops. So there was a lot of Gravekeepers, Fish OTK, Random Empty Jar, um, Dragoonities. So, we're going to go into how to side against them. This is part one, and part one is going to be what you can side. Part two, we're going to uh, go into an overview of how to play around decks, because sometimes you have to change your play style when you're playing against different decks. So, um, we can give some tips on that and some obscure plays that you might not know about. So, let's go into part one. One more thing, if you guys don't already know, um, there's going to be a raffle this month. So anybody making uh, purchases on singles on the Core TCG website, enter in the code DDG3 and you'll get a 5% discount and you'll be entered automatically into a pot of duality raffle, which is running until the end of this month. Um, so at the end of the month, the winner will be chosen and you are eligible for a free pot of duality. So make sure you enter that. Nothing wrong with free duality. <laughs> All right, let's begin. All right, well, let's start with six Sam's. Um, one of the main decks that was doing really well at the event and placed, you know, top 32. A lot of them. Um, aside from, you know, standard anti-meta cards like Fossil Dyna um, and Thunder Kings, you know, um, there's also a lot of other things you can say. This stops them from searching, though, forces them to play from hand, which is uh, something really essential now, um, especially since, you know, majority of the times they're getting their monster through smoke signal and stuff like that because it's a really low monster count deck. Um, also, Chain Disappearance uh, to hit the tuners. Once they hit, once you hit their tuners, uh, they have a very limited option of, uh, you know, plays. So that's also a really good side. Um, there's also Dust Tornado or Twister. Uh, this is to hit the potential gateway and, of course, the 6 Sam United because the United is the main way they plus off of their cards now. Now that they no longer have uh, three um, gateways, so that's really good. And we have Puppet Plant. This isn't for everyone. This is mainly for decks like uh, Frog Monarchs, which can use the Sheehan or whatever they grab as fodder, or decks that synchro often like plants. It's also an Earth, and it's a plant type, so it can be removed for a uh, Spore. It's really cool. Then we have Royal Oppression. I mean, this hurts almost everything, especially Sam's. Uh, majority of everything they're doing is Special Summoning, so it's really nice to have. Kinetic Soldier, you already know. Uh, turns into a huge beater that they can't run over, and they have, forces them to synchro outside of something like Sheehan in order to get rid of them. And then for those of you who play uh, E Heroes and stuff like that, uh, Super Poly, um, you can grab their warrior type monster, their warrior synchro, and synchro out with it into whatever you want, basically. So that's nice to have. Next we have Gravekeepers, um, of course, Noblemen to hit their set recruiters and spies. Malevolent Catastrophe. Uh, they play a lot of back row, massive back row. This is one of the main things they do. And sometimes they'll side into Starlight Road because they expect this, but um, just activate it in a time where it's necessary. Sometimes they'll have a face of oppression and that'll end up messing them up. So that's really cool. Um, Deck Daddy. It's nice to chain this to an allure because <laughs> um, then it forces them to uh, discard their hand. Um, so that's pretty cool. And it hits everything in their deck. Um, bottomless Trapple. <clears throat> uh, if you don't mainboard this, sometimes it's nice to side it against anti-meta decks uh, to hit cards that potentially hurt you, like Vanisher or whatever. And th since their monsters are turning into 2k beaters, uh, it basically hits any recruiter they summon or, you know, any descendant they summon. Uh, so it's pretty nice. Uh, Dust Tornado. This is, of course... Uh, if your deck heavily relies on the graveyard, you really need a way to get rid of Necrobally. And, of course, another way to really get rid of Necrobally is Closed Forest. Uh, if you don't know what this does, 
all face up uh, beast type monsters you control gain 100 attack for each monster in your graveyard. Now, of course, that's a pretty irrelevant effect, but the best part of this effect is field spells cannot be activated while this card is face up on the field, and field spells cannot be activating the turn this card is destroyed. So this forces them to not be able to play Necro Valley, basically. Uh, it's not that bad if you are really desperate to keep it off the field. Alright, now let's move on to Fish OTK. Um, Magic Drain. This is good against those Trunade OTK plays that they might be going for. Uh, it forces them to play a spell from their hand if not. Um, so that's a good way to get around Trunade. I mean, the only other real way is Solemn Judgment. So, one of the good uh, options. Effect Veiler. This is to stop you from getting Colossal Fighter Armory Arm looped. Uh, you Effect Veiler the Armory Arm. You can also Veiler the Super Ancient guy, but make sure he has no uh, other fishes on the field because he's basically like Titanial. He can contribute to negate the Veiler. Um, but this is really good for stopping the OTK from happening since they usually go Trunate first, so that's nice. Um, Dimensional Fissure, DD Crow, etc. Basically, removal cards uh, stops them from getting their graveyard set up because they rely on cards like Fishborg and, uh, um, and Treeborn to go off, of course. Zombie World stops them from uh, tribute summoning because uh, everything becomes zombie and you can only tribute for zombie, so um, basically. They have the tribute set. Uh, same thing for Mask of Strict, stops them from tributing in general. So also two nice cards to have. Um, so they can't go into their, you know, uh, monarch plays or their super ancient plays. Alright, now next up is Dragoonities. We have Swallow Flip. Uh, this when they bring out Vadriana, when they're going into eight, you can swallow flip it to stop them from synchroing. Um, pulling the rug also stops them. It stops them at the source, hits the um the ducks or the legionnaire. The majority of the effects that need to go off are through normal summon monsters. Rivalry of the Warlords, uh, they summon their wing beast like ducks, they equip a phalanx, you chain rivalry, and they can't special summon the phalanx. Victoria, because a majority of the times they're synchroing to dragon type monsters, which you can manipulate once they hit the graveyard. Closed Forest, just like with GKs, they rely on their field spell for momentum, and even more so with Dragoonities. Dragoonities need their field spell for searching, they play a low uh, count of monsters, and a majority of the times they need a specific setup for their hand that is acquired through the ravine, so this stops it. DD Crow, uh, you chain it to the activation of, you know, the Ducks or Legionnaire, and remove from play those Phalanxes or those pesky Achilles, so it gets rid of that. Electric Fires, just like Victoria, grabs their dragons. They usually have a Stardust setup on the field, so you can take that and screw with it. <laughs> Uh, chain Disappearance hits the tuners, especially Phalanx. Phalanx can be a nuisance, and getting rid of the first one will spell trouble for them later on. Compulsory um, stops that Stardust play, that pesky Stardust that always comes out first turn. Dust Tornado, of course, with Field Spell. Uh, chaining it, uh, is a plus for you, because they pay their costs, and then they go look at their effects since it's a continuous. T-King stops them in their tracks, stops them from searching. If you can drop this early game, uh, it really messes them up because uh, they have to play from hand, and Dragoonities really can't do that. And of course, Effect Failure. This is the bane of Dragoonities' existence. Uh, this Usually, Dragoonities don't have any response to this. There's nothing really you can counter side to stop Effect Failure. So, side in three Veilers, and they're in for a real, you know, tough trip. So, that's a really good side, too. Next up is Plant Synchro. You have Rivalry or Goes and Match. Uh, basically, Plants rely on using plants and other uh, monsters to synchro into non-plants, of course, and they can't play with just plants. Uh, that's not their win condition. It's usually powerful synchros they bring out to do that. So rivalry and goes and stop them from synchroing, which is really important because that's why it's called plant synchro. <laughs> um, you have, you know, your removal elements like crow, you know, chain disappearance, crevice, banisher, defissure. You see the pattern here. Removal hurts plants. It's very graveyard-oriented. People who have the ability can side Necro Valley. Uh, a lot of anti-meta decks would, will play this uh, in response to it. And anything with a Ryko engine, Nobleman of Crossout. And of course, your Royal Oppression, because it's very Synchro Summon reliant. And very, spe very special Summon reliant. Now we go on to X-Sabers. Nobleman of Crossout. They're always sending Pashuls, Emmer's Blades, and Dark Souls, especially the Dark Souls. And this is the main way to really get rid of the Dark Soul without them getting their effect and their setup. 
got them Z-Kill. Of course, you take their X-Sabers instead of they, them getting theirs. Um, you usually chain it to their own E-Call so you can bless off of it. Thunder King Raya, of course, stops them from searching. Runs over those uh, pesky Dark Souls without them getting their search off of it. This is really good because they really rely on their setup. And this disrupts it because it stops them from adding. Seven tools. And seven tools because if you don't main deck it, it's nice because they have trap stuns. Um, and if you really are back row dependent, uh, this is the main response to the trap stun so that you can stop them from going into Hunley and destroying everything. So if you're heavy anti-meta, um, trap. This is the main answer to traps then without paying a heavy cost. And that's it for X Sabres. Let's go on to Miracle Gemini. Super Poly, take their warriors, take their E heroes, make your own. Necro Valley, uh, this is to stop them from going into Miracle Fusion. Sometimes if you're able to play it, then it's nice to side in if you're not graveyard oriented. For builds heavily reliant on the Shining, you would play Convulsories. Nice to get rid of him without him getting his effect off, because some most of the time he, they minus in order to get him out, but they'll plus if he gets destroyed. So this is a nice way of getting him destroyed, aside from Bryo. Any Fusion Gate oriented build, you can side in Dust Tornadoes. Um, make them pay their costs, chain Dust Tornado, messes them up. And of course, all Gemini, Miracle Gemini decks are very backfield oriented, so Malevolent Catastrophe to basically hit everything. Very greedy card, but it usually gets there against such back row heavy decks, especially when they set everything, because no one's expecting Heavy Storm anymore. <laughs> Another deck that was seen at YCS uh, was Flambell Swarns, really creative. Um, and of course, anything graveyard oriented, you have the basics. Now, um, the D Fissures, of course, and uh, everything else. The Necro Valley to stop them from going into rekindlings, and the Banishers and DD Crows for everything else. Removal, basically, for anything that's mills and relies on the graveyard. Next up is Karakuri Machinas. Um, they'll bring out Burrito and they'll use it to plus, but they'll minus in the process. So if you can swallow flip it or solemn warning it, uh, it stops the engine hard. So this is mainly what's, um, you know, they're going to be trying to do. So stop the engine, of course, is the point of sighting. Swallow flip gets there with that. System down, if you can live for that turn, because it often OTKs, um, the system down will remove everything from their field and they'll lose momentum. If you see how the deck plays, they'll bring out a lot of Burritos and they'll swarm their field with it, but they don't usually have a means of field protection, so this will mess them up, along with Dark Hole, of course. And of course your Cyber Dragon for your Chimera tech. And everything in that deck is Earth, so if you play Ear Heroes, you can also Super Poly and go into Gaia. Alright, let's go into an overview. Well, those were the main decks that were seen in uh, Top 32, and these are the main things that you can side against them. And there's, of course, a lot of things that you can side that are unique to your deck that you could play, but these are, you know, more universal sides that might be beneficial to you. Um, questions or comments, leave them to me. Take care.